Hey guys, so Sarah from Weirdo from Pluto tagged me in the women on YouTube tag and I wanted to do it because I haven't done a tag in a while and it's all about girl power and being a woman on the internet and stuff. And that's me, you know. <laughs> My sleeves rolled up here. So here are the questions. I joined YouTube probably originally back in like 2007 um, when I graduated high school where my name came from, my username, Abrazo7. Spoilers, that's when I graduated high school. And I originally got it to upload like fan videos of Grey's Anatomy because I was one of those people. But I didn't start making making videos until I started watching the Vlogbrothers probably sophomore year in college. Um, I was writing a paper about uh, a subculture and I discovered John Green through Looking for Alaska and then I discovered Nerdfighteria and started making my own videos. So that was about 2009? 2009 when I started making videos. Oh my god, it's been six years. Holy crap. Except that was on my old channel, Abbers07 without the three. I originally switched my channel, I opened up a new one because of rifts in the Google system and I lost my AdSense. Um, but that old one is still up and visible and you can see all the old videos of me. All the awkward. Not that I'm still not awkward, you know. And then how would I categorize my style? Me? You know? lifestyle, sometimes I make beauty videos, sometimes I make music slash artistic. It is a, a gumbo of sorts. It's a hot dish because it's all sorts of things that don't necessarily make sense when you look at them separately you're like why is that going into one thing but then when you have it all together it's like mmm this is warm and comforting and tasty. Yeah. I don't know if I would ever want to like have this be my job just because of like stability and stuff but I'd like to just keep growing the way that I have been and not like some crazy fast way because that would be kind of intimidating and terrifying. I don't know I don't really have any specific goals um, and in terms of projects I a, am trying to finish a book but that doesn't necessarily have to do with my channel um, and then I want to make a film Obviously I talked to you guys about that. I wanted to make a documentary about a van going on tour. That's probably going to happen at some point, but not any other big projects dealing with YouTube specifically right now. Unique, what, I wouldn't say, I mean like unique to being just like a g girl on the internet as opposed to being a guy on the internet. You get um, disregarded a lot because of your gender. So that's fun. I mean, I get a lot of negative comments on some of my videos where I was more ranty. The videos that I probably have the most views on, talking about like Sam Pepper and talking about Brandy Melville and all those things where I still get a lot of views all the time, those don't really upset me just because it's a sensitive topic and I wanted to start a discussion anyway, but Probably the comments that bother me the most are anytime I'm talking about music and people are like, you don't know what you're talking about. And like, they just completely write me off as being like a groupie fangirl. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't adhere to your standards of what a girl is supposed to be. So like, shut up. How do I deal with them? Most of the time I just delete the comment if it's useless. If it's somebody being completely misunderstood, usually I will comment back and try to keep the conversation going to to make them understand. But a lot of times it's just somebody who is stuck in their ways and they don't want to listen. So at that point I'm just like, okay, delete, block. Bye Felicia. The fact that I'm 26, it helps a lot with dealing with um, negativity and with haters, if you will. Um, because I've gone through that in my adult life rather than in my teenage life. I had a bully as a teenager which sucked but I can only imagine dealing with the bullying that happens on the internet as a teenager now. Like I don't know how any of you guys do it as young people and I, more power to you. Um, but as a grown up usually I just like brush it off and ignore it because I have way more important things to deal with in my 
day-to-day -day life, like rent and my job and like my interpersonal friendships with the people who I hang out with and my family and my health. So, yay, adulting. How do I deal with the, uh, the challenges that come with the internet? I ignore them and deal with the challenges of the rest of my life. I love the videos where you guys end up commenting saying that um, I made your day and I made you think about things and I, I inspired you. Anything that gets anybody inspired makes me fucking happy as shit. Um, so any of like the kind of spoken word things that I've done, basically the videos that get me the least amount of views, the ones that kind of reflect my emotions the most and just in a really real way. Uh, I find her the most satisfying because it's really cathartic making those videos and while I love making the more upbeat and like over caffeinated videos I love making those like those are the most fun to make but like being done with them I'm kind of like I get to fill you guys in on what's been going on but like the ones that kind of let me get stuff out are really really satisfying and cathartic it's kind of the same way with like driving a long distance in the dark or when I'm at Hot Topic and I'm just folding shirts and not doing anything else in my brain. It's a very cathartic thing to do um, when there's not a ton of things I have to do with my brain at the time. Is that making sense? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> fucking do it. Just do it. Turn your camera on. Turn your webcam on. Just fucking do it because the worst part of it is like the leading up to it and you're like nervous and you're not sure how you're gonna do it, how you're gonna deal with it, how scary it's gonna be. I learned this recently when I did karaoke for the first time because the 10 or so minutes leading up to it was like my, my stomach was in my chest. I was like, I felt like I wanted to throw up. Granted, I had drank like two stouts in a short amount of time, but leading up to it is way scarier than the actual act of doing it. It's stage fright. Everybody starts out awkward. I mean, like, I don't want to say, like, don't worry about all the haters, and everybody's gonna worry about them. Everybody's gonna feel those emotions. Everybody's gonna feel those words, because words hurt. Remember that those people that are putting you down probably have really shitty lives. Yeah. One thing. If you guys walked away with one thing, it would just be like honesty. Because I pride myself on being totally upfront with you guys, even when I'm feeling shitty, even when I don't wanna make a video. You guys have seen lately, when I don't wanna make a video, I don't make a video. I haven't been on schedule all the time. Um, I've been getting better, because I feel like making myself do these things helps me do other things, you know? Realness, like, and that's just gonna seem too vague and fucking weird, but honesty, because I wanna be a role model for you guys because that feels awesome. I like inspiring you guys. I like being a role model, okay? I really like it. I'm just saying. Ava Gordy, because she's fucking hilarious and real as shit. Um, I love her. She's funny, her videos are short and to the point, and I always watch them, like, Ava. And her style is like on point all the time. Laura Nuzeth, uh, she is one of the beauty bloggers and uh, friends of mine that I watch all the time. Um, she is so friggin' hardworking, like she has two channels that she operates full time, one in English, one in Spanish, and then a blog that she writes, like fills in all the time. Her videos are always so polished, always so funny like she her personality is great and she's cool and has really good taste in music and I like her videos and then uh Melody Murphy you doll Melody has come so far in the last year and I'm so proud of her like Melody you're you're just doing all this shit with like BuzzFeed and like the world she's another beauty blogger but she also talks about like life and um, and health and dealing with things and her videos are really real too like she's so genuine and so kind and so open I like her she's cool 
And then one extra, I'm, I'm throwing in an extra. My friend Rachel actually started this cooking channel called Death by Donuts, and it's a gluten-free cooking show, and I'm so excited for her. She's worked really hard on it, and I love the idea of having a gluten-free cooking show, not because I'm gluten-free, but because my sister is, and I know a lot of people who have gluten sensitivity and celiac disease, and a lot of people don't actually realize how much celiac disease affects you. It's not just like, oh, I get a tummy ache every time I eat something with wheat in it. It's like anytime gluten comes in contact with anything you're eating, um, you are gurgly for like literally like a week at a time. You can become malnourished and tired and achy and just you feel like shit for a week and it can affect your skin you get like like sores and bruises on it and you just you feel terrible and people don't realize that when they hear like oh I'm just going gluten-free it's like people who decide to be gluten-free are what's wrong <laughs> with the whole issue I'm very excited that Rachel has taken this on and decided to do this um, and I want it to get big and fancy and cool and I want her to like collaborate with all these other cooking people and like do cool shit because gluten-free doesn't have to be shitty. Obviously I tag Ava and Laura and Melanie and then Rachel on her personal channel. Obviously Rachel you shouldn't do it on your cooking channel because that wouldn't make sense. I tag Lena from Just Kiss My Frog and Sangeeta because you're awesome Sangeeta. Haven't seen you in a while. Rachel Whitehurst. Um, I don't know, if, if you're tagged in the thing, I'll put your name in the thing if I think of more. But I will give you guys a song of the day. This video, I will warn you, there's a dildo in it. This band called Fiddler, who I've heard of before, never really like listened to their music. The song called Cocaine, and the music video has Nick Offerman in it. So that's awesome. Nick Offerman, skate, punk, and a dildo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a link to the video below. It is age restricted because of the dildo. So if you're under 18, I'm um, sorry. But if you're under 18, you're probably logged into a YouTube that's like over 18. It's not a real dick, okay? It's just a dildo. But yeah, that is your song of the day. And um, if you're tagged, by all means do this video. If you're not, you don't you can do it too again thank you sarah for tagging me and you guys should go check out sarah's channel uh weirdo from pluto she's been doing all these like travel vlogs and stuff she lived in norway for a while and so that's cool norway what's up i'm norwegian so that's why i did that yeah uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you on monday monday okay love you bye